everybody out there. Uh, this is our first run of a series that we'd like to do called uh, Autism in Adulthood. And we have some uh, special guests. I'll introduce myself first and we'll kind of go down the line of, uh, and everybody can kind of introduce themselves. My name is Brian Mishler. I'm a licensed clinical social worker at the Trevor Center. I run uh, some groups and do uh, psychotherapy, neurofeedback, biofeedback, um, and work with uh, the full spectrum of people on, with autism. So uh, happy to be here and hopefully we'll have many more of these. It looks like on my line, Tara's next. I was gonna say, hi, I'm Tara Geyer. I'm a board certified behavior analyst at the Trafford Center. Um, I work with kids from about two and up into adulthood and really like to focus on everyone's talents and strengths and bringing my previous background into doing film and music and um, various creative pieces into what we do at the center with our older kids and adults. I'm really excited to get started and working on um, autism and adulthood with you fine gentlemen this morning. Spencer, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, uh, hey guys. I'm Spencer, and I currently also work at the Trevor Center. Um, I have an opportunity of working there for about a year, and I also have autism, and it's been a really great experience for me to seeing how other kids and adults act, and it's just been a really big inspiration for me. Excellent. Marcos? Hi, everyone. My name is Marcos Petri. I'm Brazilian, I'm 27 years old. I've been diagnosed very late in my life, so I suffered a lot of prejudice and a lot of vicious attitudes towards myself. And I didn't want it to happen to other kids, so I went on to study autism and to share the information in my channel, Giaio de Autista in YouTube. So I started to get ASD awareness in Brazil and I noted the situation to change. I am a writer. I am uh, an advocate for autism, and I am in Santa Catarina, my state, my birth state, uh, a commander, a, a recognition that the government gives to everyone that promotes social inclusion. And I'm the first uh, person with disabilities to use the parliament to address a commencement in the end of the year, because every end of the year, Santa Catarina hosts a festivity, I think, with speaks and the authorities gather there to see who promoted what in the state, who spotted, and I was the first handicapped person to open that and to give the, the speech. So it was a remarkable moment in my history and the history of the state. And I'm also the first commander of the state to be in the handicapped uh, condition. And that makes me very proud, as well as the ASD community here is very proud too. So I'm very proud to talk to you today and to broaden this debate, uh, doing this bridge between South America and North America, and hopefully I can learn and grow with you. Awesome, we're really proud of you too. You do amazing work um, and really spread advocacy and inclusion and show um, really the gifts and strengths uh, that people on the autism spectrum bring uh, to everybody. I think that both you and Spencer uh, are an inspiration, not just to people on the autism spectrum, uh, but really an inspiration to people in general. Definitely, Brian. I agree. I just, um, Marcos, I don't really think that you're handicapped, though. You go above and beyond what you do, and you're putting yourself out there, what a lot of people don't even try to do. And that's just, that's amazing. Because now with the neuro association that we have for autism, Usually one thing will just affect us over and over and over, but you go above that and you fight your fear. And this is where you become and you become an inspiration for other people. And that's just, it's really awesome to see. It's incredible. Yeah. What you're doing is, uh, is amazing for any individual to be doing. So really, really nice to meet you here today, Marcos. We haven't met at all before this. So it's cool to get to know you through this. Um, so kind of bringing the first question to something that's pretty relevant to what's going on now. Um, everyone around the world has been very affected by COVID-19 and I think everyone's kind of dealing with it in various ways. 
So I was just curious to know how you guys are going about dealing with COVID-19. Are there any anxieties around it? Are there any certain ways you're able to get your mindset in the right place to really be okay with what's going on? Well, Tara, I think that's, that's a great question to ask. Um, for at least for me, I noticed I have to have an hour of power in the morning. I have to do something. For me, it has to be running. Because the more I run, I, I didn't really like it in the beginning, but it's something that just um, gets my mind going. And then I have this lemon water as well, and I just try to stick to a routine. Because if I don't, then it's very hard for me to stay on task and find the goals that I want to. Because if I don't do that, then I just get this negative behavior thinking, ah, I'm not doing what I need to. And it's kind of like a, a downward cycle. So for me, just working on that flexibility, but at the same time, understanding that this is a great opportunity for me. Has there been any barriers around like wearing masks or washing hands more often or, or is that kind of just like eh, whatever for you uh, it's been kind of like eh, whatever for me because from i've been at the house only so i haven't really been um really going to stores i've been just kind of running outside by myself so for me it's been like eh. well that's good that's yeah. not really something that's affecting you Marcos, how about you? What is it like over where you're at and kind of how have you been experiencing this whole thing? To me, it's very, very hard to see that routine changes. My base has changed then. I have a very, very uh, awkward feeling when I look at this because I've been all over Brazil promoting ASD awareness so far. So it kind of abruptly stopped and I, and I went like, hey, I'm going to be stuck here. And I had another particularity where I live is very small, like 6,000 inhabitants. And people say, hello, in the street, everyone goes very nearby, is everything close, everything is very tiny, and I am stuck home. I don't have this social interaction, and I'm very bad at starting social contact. So I took advantage of my town to start that. And with the COVID-19, it went away. So I'm stuck here with my hours of power, like Brian's, like Spencer says, my hours of power are here. So to pass the time, I just sit here and go like learning ukulele, learning guitar, learning piano up there. And it kind of satisfies my necessities. Not totally because my humor is still affected profoundly. I thing spencer's humor is also affected profoundly even though he has routines to stake is that right spencer for sure for sure i definitely agree with that marcos like the the mood it seems that sometimes you have lacks of control because this situation is so unexpected and i root upon the expected things they go like ah, but it's just sometimes i'm in control most of the times mm -hmm. Just sometimes, and I can't predict when this is going to happen, when not. I, I definitely do agree, Marcos. I think music also plays a really big role, because like what you said before, when you can't control something, it just feels like you're like, Ugh! and it just, and the only way for me to express it is if I'm exercising or if I'm, I'm actually been getting into piano again, but music has been such a big thing for me. As well. You're really yeah. able to turn those negatives into something healthy, something mm -hmm. positive, Nothing. something to really propel yourself forward. Do you feel like you, you have a good support system at home or in your tight-knit community there that's kind of helping you make sure you stay on track? Or are you going about this by yourselves? Hmm. I As far as like adulthood and autism too, like, so your age is could you each give your age yeah um i'm 23 currently okay yeah and marcos 87 you're 23 and 27 so are you are like what's your living situation like right now hmm. so my living situation is i'm still living um at my parents house but there's um for me, I'm still paying my own expenses. However, it's just, I'm happy that I'm still living at my parents' house because with the COV-19 that's affecting me and I'm learning from my dad on how to pay the bills. 
since he's um, an accountant. At the same time, I'm just slowly transitioning. For me, for the longest time, I've always been fearful of doing something new and then falling down. So I'm just trying to take little steps at a time and just be aware of what's happening, but at the same time, trying to put myself in more um, situations that don't make me feel good, but at the same time that are good for me. So you're really stretching your flexibility and what Definitely. you're Definitely, like a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the more it's gonna keep going. Yeah, that's good. Cause at this point in your life, you have to push yourself, right? No Definitely. one's, no one's yeah. doing it for you. Cause no one's gonna do it for me. I have to keep putting pressure onto myself. Kind of like a diamond. You gotta put pressure onto it in order to make it shine. How about and you, Mark? Oh, sorry. My living situation today is similar to Spencer's. I live with my parents and I have been through a lot of challenges alongside with them. They support me. They do the same thing they did to you, Spencer. They kind of, my mother is an accountant. She's oh, wow. been an accountant for like two years and she worked in the, the Department of Finances in the City Hall for 28 years. So she is very organized and she has helped me to come across the situations in life to organize myself to prepare myself for different contexts so I'm very thank uh, very grateful and happy for that and my father is very supportive because he drives me everywhere and he shows me what to do what not to do and I'm adapting bit by bit with the support of my family I say hey I'm going to do this and my family comes along and says this is this way and that's all the way it works this way it doesn't work that way and it's supporting me and helped me to see my potential and like you say support me to see that i need to be stressed sometimes to shine like exactly. a diamond perfect comparison great minds think alike marco yeah so marco, you uh traveled a lot you said did your family travel with you when you were going to speak all over yes they drove me around and they uh, supported me they scheduled my my appointments because they are my managers very cool They're all oh, wow. like a family and uh advocate family because my mother speaks as well as a mother my mother comes up and says do the best for your kids because I'm not only autistic. I have a brain injury and the malformation in my brain in the left side, I think. Mm. And this caused a lot of stress in my community because people looked at me as a baby and says, and said, Hey, put him in the bed. Uh, and I'm afraid I'm going to be very dull here with the term they used. They said, put him in the bed to die because that was expected to happen when I was born oh. with a oh, wow. brain injury. And my mother then confirmed. My mother said, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to give them the best he can get. And I advanced. So she speaks about this experience. Sadly, she doesn't speak English. If she spoke, she would be here. Or I tell him this to you. Mm -hmm. But she comes up and she brings me along. So she helps me a lot. And my father, he does everything. He mounted the studio here where I shoot my videos. He restrains my guitars. He uh, repairs the flat tires of the car when it happens. It's the mister does it all. <laughs> it's like <awesome>. MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. I love MacGyver. I haven't mm. heard that in a long time. MacGyver, yeah. yes. That's his nickname, you know. The nickname of my father is MacGyver. <laughs> well, Marcos, I think that's amazing because for me, um, I know I don't really mean to do this, but when I look at um, my situation and I look at the standards of society, it almost feels like when I'm 21, I have to leave the house, that I have to do something more productive yeah. with my life. So for me, it's been like, I love my parents, but at the same time, it's almost like I have to leave. So I'm really. Um, impressed that with you and your mom and dad, you have this amazing click and you guys just bond so well. And I do also bond well with my mom and dad since my mom was a child therapist who brought me to where I am today. And I'm so grateful for the fact, but 
Um, I wish I could just be as immersed as you. I'm going to definitely work on that for Mother's Day as well. But you can. I love you that, can. I love that you um, bring that up, feeling like you have to move out of the house at 21. Yeah. I think it's just society's culture. I don't know. Oh, but it's not true at all. Like, I think it depends on your family dynamic. Like, yeah. my family has just welcomed us back whenever we need to. So I think I moved out to go to college, but then I moved back in. And then I moved to LA and then I moved back in. And I think I was like 29 when I moved back in the last time. And it's like, who cares? They were supportive. They wanted me to go after my dreams. They, they knew, you know, I'd eventually do something with whatever I was going for. But like, if you've got that family support system, like you guys have, like, that's incredible. That means that speaks volumes. And don't ever feel embarrassed or weird that you're not moved out yet because I, I guarantee you there's a lot of 21 year olds living at home. There's yeah. a lot of 27 year olds living at home. Not a big deal. And you're yeah. doing what's working for you and you guys are both doing incredible things with your lives. So I was going to say that too. If we look at that, but then we look at other 27 and 20, you know, three year olds, they are not doing um, the social awareness the um the drive for this uh you know the the mission that you guys have yeah something greater um, than ourselves is, is so yeah. far beyond what i see other 23 and other 27 year olds i i'd absolutely be embarrassed to put my 23 and 27 year old self against the two of you um <laughs> you, you guys have such a dedication to community and uh um you know just this uh inspiration and and service to humanity that that typically like we can look at probably the majority of people at any age and they are not putting out the the and and not just autism but like i said everyone definitely they are not putting out the effort and the um you know, the goodness and the um, knowledge to try to uh, do something for a whole group of people. It's absolutely Definitely. amazing. I know um, I can't speak for Marcos, but for me, I've had a very painful experience through um, school. And so for me, I had to adapt. I had to be almost obsessed and like why I wasn't fitting in and how to make that who I am. And a little bit about my past history, I mean, after high school, I thought I could do what I wanted to do, and I tried to do college, and it just didn't work out for me, so I was very suicidal. And until that fact, I was like, well, I can't do something that isn't part of me. So I got really obsessed, and I was like, what is something that I can really do to help not just myself, but other people, individuals? And so for me, I thought that working at the Travis Center would be perfect because I've always wanted to give back. Um, I've always wanted to be a role model, but at the same time, learn and give to others and also receive. So for me, I think me and Marcos have had a challenging past and we kind of have a different viewpoint from others that are 20 to 30 because they haven't really, maybe they had some instances where they've been beaten down, but I don't think as much as people with autism or disabilities that in my mind, they're not really disabilities. They're just, I think, challenges that actually give us strength because we look at the world differently from other people. But you pointed right. You pointed exactly right because I have the same challenges as you. And in the high school, I didn't cease to suffer prejudice. To me, it was longer. It took longer to me to realize my strengths and my weaknesses that was in the college when I was introduced to my college classmates and I thought to myself, here is where I'm going to fly. So to me, it lasted a lot longer. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yes, this adaptation, this pressure society is going to be there no matter what you do. In Brazil, more than in America, because in Brazil, people tend to be more explosive, more outsiders, you know. Yeah. You are intrinsic in America. In Brazil, we are extrinsic. I don't know if you know what I mean. Brazilians are much like broader emotions. And if you have tiny understanding of the emotions, you're going to be passed by. And that's what happened to me. That was the difference I wanted to isolate. But the rest is very equal to what you tell me. 
uh, Spencer. Do you think you know, the awareness in Brazil is much less than America? That people don't exactly understand autism yet there? They have a misunderstanding, yeah. They have a lot of myths that bother this understanding to grow. Like, for example, when I started uh, going in the street, people said, he is handicapped, he is handicapped, and I don't have anything with that, because if you consider that I'm handicapped and you want to know, all right, but they speculated a lot. In Brazil, we have this approach of speculating that I don't see so much in America. Uh, and probably you correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see this speculation in America. Well, I think Spencer can probably speak to that better, right? Because um, we'd be coming at it from a different yeah. point of view. True. Um, so what was the main point of this question? Like how it, how uh, people... Wondering, is, is the awareness prevalent now, I guess, in Brazil well, and in America? I think... Feeling like more people are understanding. Yeah, I think people are understanding, but they just don't really understand. It's like a veteran coming back from the war, and they under maybe they can understand to a point and being sympathetic. But for me, um, learning through this, I feel that we all kind of go through the same thing since we all have the same. We all have different neurosations, but we all have like six needs that all humans have. Um, but for autism, it's the neural associations. If something happens, like if we get, if, we, if we're trying to date a girl or date a guy and it just doesn't work out, what's going to happen is it's going to keep going back into our life. As soon as we do something, we'll go back and relate to it right away. So it's almost like for me, I mean, I don't have it, but it's almost like a PTSD where it just, if you do not take it by its roots, it'll just keep festering and growing and you'll lose your self-esteem, you'll lose your self-drive. Unless you're learning a new knowledge and trying to apply it and be something greater than yourself, it's gonna be very hard to break through that barrier and say, hey, I'm actually doing something that's good for me and good for other people. Otherwise, you'll just feel inferior. And that's my point of view. However, going back to the question on that tangent, I think that America has been better at being self-advocate about autism, but it's just really hard to relate. Yeah, How do you I feel like, Spencer, like services are available as long as this is like adults and autism? Like uh, once you kind of cross over into adulthood, how well did you feel supported in America? Um, honestly, I don't want to say not a lot, but at the same time, I also had my own pride that I didn't want to be supported. However, I think that also plays a role. But if I feel that if I could get support, I definitely could get um, support needed. However, I was very lucky to have a mom that already knew what I was thinking before I would even talk to her. But for me, I think the biggest thing for me was my pride and um, not really thinking that I could fix it myself. So if that kind of answers the question. I know I kind of went a little bit around that, a little bit. You're kind of saying like those services were available to you, but you... Yeah, I just didn't take the opportunity and the time to do that. Well, yeah. For me, I well, thought when you're that talking I, about support, do you mean like from your parents or family or like oh yeah. you said you struggled in college. Did you feel like there was supports there for you? I, I believe there was, but for me, in my point of view and my self-conscious, I thought that if I had to i felt like i had to do it all myself for me at that time in my perspective i felt that i needed to show the world that autism is regular and then i don't need help and um that it was almost like i had to prove people wrong so i think my perspective was totally wrong at that time and so i really never asked for any help um i was just very prideful in who i was but um but yeah, I mean, I feel that there was definitely, I remember thinking back at college, there was, there was some teachers and um, some sources that I could definitely ask for help in. So I think um, America definitely does have a lot of resources to help autism. I think it's just understanding that, I don't know about a lot of other autistic kids, but I think that they are also 
they feel that if they need to get support, they probably don't want to have it because they maybe feel inferior about it. But yeah. I'm not too sure about that fact. Well, I think that kind of leads into like self advocacy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is something we talk about a lot and how important self advocacy is if you're going into the job world or college, but how you can feel sort of negative about self advocating. Um, because of past experiences or the feeling, like you said, of feeling that inferior. Um, so if you guys can kind of speak to that, have you had experiences, Marcos, with, I mean, you're out there advocating all the time. Have you had that experience in like a personal work setting or college where you had to go in and say, hey, I have autism. This is what it means to me, you know. That's exactly the question. That's exactly where I parted from to make my career really happen because I thought to myself, nobody was giving me opportunities. Nobody was looking at the real Marcus, what Marcus could do. So I self-advocated and I went on to say, hey, I've got talents, I've got gifts, I'm going to make them work for society. I just need more time. And this, I, I not only said I needed more time, I needed more attention. I had a brain wiring which was different. I, I craved it. I paved my way into success. I said, look, I can't run so fast. I can't tolerate the sounds. I can't control many situations at the same time, but I can write, I can play guitar, I can speak. And I gathered the three gifts of mine. I, and I made my career happen because my mother said when I was transitioning into adulthood, now you have to fly. And I said, how do I fly? So I grabbed my literature, I grabbed my music, and I made them a pair of wings for me to fly. And when it happened, I started advocating. I started saying, you have to use the gifts as your muscles, as your strength to get into society. And that's the naturalistic strategy because uh, you have to approach autism via natural natural acts and not via forced acts you have to fit into society or society needs to fit into you it's a natural thing right so it i just want to cut in just for a second so what you're saying is you just have to be yourself you can't be anybody else yeah exactly and you have not only be yourself but you have to discover uh, somebody you have like a role to me it was my father and my brother and later on, I talked to Brian about this earlier on. Later on, I discovered the celebrities I admire and I wanted to impersonate somehow. Do you remember, Brian, when we have this conversation about, because he asks about my accent. My accent has a lot of Irishness to it. I don't know if you noticed. Mm -hmm. But I do this because I imagine an Irish man as a role to be strong, to, in, to indulge the pressure as a society. To kind of act in that i don't know probably i'm talking uh something which is very very off your reality no i think that's amazing because you're visualizing something that really um puts you into the state of mind of being confident and bold yeah. that's that's amazing i mean that's what's something i've really been trying to do is visualize myself into a state of where i'm most passionate so that when i do something that's productive for me it's so much easier to do. So I think that's amazing what you're doing, Marcos. I think this state of mind you have to focus on to transition into adulthood and to pass by the challenges, learn from them, grow from them, and apply them, give them back to society. I always say society doesn't respect us until we give back to society, productive routines, you in sport, me in music, in literature and advocating and then society is going to learn what we're capable of wow otherwise no that's perfectly said yes uh marcos i think that you have both you and spencer have such great insight into um mm -hmm. autism in your own brains that and well and not just autism i think you both again like compared to all people the level of insight that you guys have into how you guys think and how positive and how uh, great your message is. 
is is really spectacular. I know he was uh, Marcos was talking a little bit about um, his explanation of languages, and that's another gift that you have, Marcos, is that you've learned so many languages. But not just that you've learned English, but you've learned a ton of accents that are compared to English. Um, and we talked a little bit about your auditory processing also helps you with music. Uh, I think outside of uh, this adult and autism, um, there's other people that I know that I would like, and Spencer too, we've talked about that, how, you, how integrating sensory activity is very different for those on the autism spectrum. And how you, what sometimes starts out as a deficit ends up kind of being a road to the gifts that you have. Exactly, exactly. I don't concentrate on, hey, I listen differently. I, I hear differently. I concentrate on, this is a different setting of hearing. This is a different hearing. I can do whatever I want with it. I can mime an Irish man. I can mime an English man. I can mime a Canadian man. And this is my gift. I, I could use it for comedy easily. But I don't feel myself so funny like Andy Kaufman or Jim Carrey, whoever you may think. So I parted for literature. I can read texts for kids. For example, my niece, when she goes to sleep, I read to her. And the dragon said, hey, little girl, I am going to be here. I do the character's voice, things like that. And it kind of makes me so thrilled, so emotional, so uh, connected. Uh, that I don't feel difficulty anyhow. I just pass by it and I don't notice it. Yeah. That's what I've been doing since then. Awesome. That's amazing. Tyra, it seems like he could do some uh, voiceover work. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get you on board, Marcos. <laughs> just do some warm ups before we start working and I'm up to it. Just call me and I'm going to think of something to do. That's awesome. It's not an easy skill to develop. That's, that's a really good talent to have. And uh, in some ways, Tara, it's a bit of weird talent too, because voice talent is kind of, uh, what? What is he doing? Is it changing his voice? What? Wait, I didn't notice it. Like Andy Serkis, the, the actor, he changes his voice a lot. And I liked that because of what I'm talk about uh, as Marcus, only Marcus said, don't have a role to follow. So I look at my father, I look at um, the celebrities and I, not that I want to be them, but I want to do things like they did. Mm -hmm. So almost like their habits, like you want to do some of their habits that have made them successful? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice. Well, I just want to pick your brain a little bit more, Marcos. Um, what was really your hero story right before you transitioned into thinking that you had to give back to society to get society? Like when you were, um, I guess the main point is, um, like when you were advocating, what was, um, what was the meaning of why did you, did you do that? What did, what, did you get obsessed about in order to really put your head down two feet forward and just grind towards your goal? I think I became sort of obsessed with that because I thought I suffered uh, my share of bullying at school. Yeah. People banged my head against the fire extinguishers. They screamed at my ears. They grabbed my, my wrists and they started to shout and I thought, hey enough so rather than fighting them physically i fought them with the knowledge i compilated the knowledge i presented to them and the best reaction i ever gotten was seeing someone that bullied me crying because wow. hey i made marcus suffer yeah. and that was empathy put into practice applied empathy yeah that was my click that was the, the turning point for me to do the advocate thing. Wow. That, that was that moment. Yeah, I have chills. Yeah, that was uh, amazing. It was. I have no I word to describe that. that. You guys, for today, I think this is kind of a great place to stop and move forward with what we want to talk about the next few times. Just 
what you've been able to share with us, all of the negatives you've turned into positives is just insanely incredible. And I'm so excited for people to hear your voices and learn more about you and get you guys out there to help create positive changes with everyone else as well. Um, so I think things we're gonna talk about in future little interviews we do will be dating, working, going to college, finances, living situations. I think we can dive into each one of those a little more closely each time. And if anyone out there wants to ask questions, send them over on our Facebook page, the Truffert Center Leadership Group. Um, we would love to have outside questions come in too and, and see what everyone really wants to know more about. Um, do you guys wanna say any, any last words of inspiration before we head out today? Sure. I think that I tell myself, whatever I do today, three months down the road, my future self should be grateful for what I do. So understanding that everything happens for a reason. And if something does happen that's bad, I feel that something good will happen right after that. So just keep pushing forward. Very, very good. Inspirational indeed. He motivated me, gave me energy then. Because, <laughs> you know, I've I'm in a moment in my life where I'm facing whether a plateau or a bump up into my living standard. Because of this COVID situation, you just gave me inspiration now with your words. Thank you very much. <laughs> Same here, Marcos. <laughs> but my final words are going to be like struggle, but have a point of reference have a reference of who you want to be, not necessarily who you want to be, but the habits of that person that uh, gives you some strengths. And don't look at the small things. Celebrate the big conquers of your life. Because people look at the, the tiny things. Uh, for example, Marcus walks lamp in. And I, yes, I lamp, but I advocate. I play guitar. These are my big conquers. And you fathers and mothers have to look at the conquers of your kids. Not what people point out the street. Point in the street, you know. This is a, an advice of mine to you. Marcus, would you like to share the name of your, uh, you like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram? And Instagram, I'm at P3M5. That's the name Instagram allowed me to have, the tag, right? And Facebook, the same thing, at b 3 m 5 And YouTube is Giardio de un Autista. It's Portuguese for Autism Diaries, right? It's Giardio de un Autista. I think we should write it in the edition of this video because it was going to be easier for us to find each other in... In internet. Yeah. And yeah, then our Facebook page is uh, Trevor Center Leaders in Creative Media. Um, Tar, do you remember? I, I'm drawing a blank on the YouTube channel. Um, I think it's Creative Media Group, TLC, something like that. So we'll put a title on here so that okay. people can just see it all easily. <laughs> we don't have to stumble through it. Yeah. So thank you very much and everybody, you know, in the future, uh, we'll continue to put out this series. I think that this was absolutely inspirational. Thank you so much, Marcus and Spencer. And of course, Tara, um, it, like I said, I, it, it went far beyond what I, what I expected it would be. You guys did an amazing job. I really appreciate it. And we really appreciate you guys. Um, so join us next time. Bye. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye, everyone. You guys. See each other again soon. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you liked it, and I hope you'll tune in for future episodes. Please, please, please like, share. If you have any questions or if you have suggestions or, or uh, ideas for future episodes or things you'd like to learn or hear, please comment below. We'd really like to grow this community and show the absolute wonderful talent, strengths, and gifts of this very unique population. Uh, this is not just to empower the autism community, although that's what we'd like to do, 
but we want to show that our communities and our societies are better um, for full inclusion, uh, especially for those of the autism population. So please help us. Have a great day.